travel, this is Ari. How about some drills for fills? The exercises I'm about to show you are scalar exercises, and we're going to be doing them in a very certain fashion. Classical players practice that sort of thing a lot, actually, and we can adapt it for our purposes. In essence, we're practicing scales, and when you practice a scale, you usually go from the root to the top, right here, I'm in G major, for example. Now I'm going to expand that a little bit for our purposes here. I'm going to expand this to cover all the notes that are part of the G major scale in this area. So it's going to start, that includes this note, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, but then I can keep going, A, B, C, they're also part of the scale, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this scale down and not play it in order, but I'm going to play it in thirds. And since I'm only using notes out of the major scale, that means that some of these thirds will be major and some of these thirds will be minor. So if I start on the root G here, I would go up a major third. Then I'm gonna go to the next note that I just skipped and play from A to C a minor third and so forth. So there is a PDF that goes with this talking technique um, session that you, where I wrote some of these patterns out for you. So basically what I'm doing is I'm playing, I'm skipping a note out of the scale, hence creating a third, and then I go back one. So it's the idea is two up, one down, two up, one back, two up, one back. And then I'm gonna write it out all the way to as far as I can go. Now here's a great variation for practicing this. Cover some fretboard knowledge as well in the process. Say the note names. G, B, A, C, B, D, C, E, D, F sharp, E, G, F sharp, A, G, B, A, C, A, B, G, A, F sharp, G, E, F sharp, D, E, C, D, B, C, A, B, G, A, F sharp, and G, okay? Now, with practice, with exercises like this, I think it's incredibly important to use a metronome. Why? Because you might do this. I'm rocking it, right? G, B, A, C, B, uh, think, 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 D, C, uh, E, D, F sharp, E, you know? You might get into a groove like that. And I think if you do that, you really cheat yourself out of the power of this exercise because music obviously happens to a beat. And we don't have the luxury in the moment of the music to kind of hold, hang on a second, I got it, you know, figure it out and then come back. Don't work that way. So I think these exercises are a fantastic opportunity to practice just that. How to think ahead and how to be able to do what we're set out to do in tempo. Now, <laughs> if you can't do it as fast as you want to do it, what do you do? You take down the tempo. You take down the tempo to the toughest spot. So saying the note names is one excellent exercise. The other excellent exercise is saying the scale degrees. Why? Because every single note of the scale, I want to be able to relate to the ton tonality at hand, which is G major. So if I am aware, well, this is my third, like when I say scale degrees, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, right, for example. So if I do that in the context of these playing the scale in thirds, then what I'm really putting my attention to is how every single note in this scale sits compared to the root, okay? So root three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, six, eight, right? So again, another exercise you definitely want to do with the metronome. So I would tackle these exercises in three ways. Speed, saying the note names, and saying scale degrees. Now, when you say scale degrees and note names, you might want to slow down because nothing is as fast as the kinesthetics of our hand. It will, the no note names or numbers are conceptual constructs and we cannot be as fast as we you know can be with our kinesthetics or with our fingers so that will always be lagging behind so i would if i want to practice this for speed then i want to not say anything and just practice the mechanics of it okay um so this is this is one version another version how you can practice it is that we reverse the starting point so instead of going one three two four i'm reversing it i'm starting with the higher note three one four two five three six four seven five 
eight, six, okay? By the way, you always want to turn around so that you hit the mirror image up on top, okay? So I'm going up with high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low, like this. And then when I turn around, it's always going to be low, high, low, high, low, high. And then we can combine the two. We can go up one and then turn the next two around so I get this. Okay, and then of course I can turn that around. We'll give you a demonstration of all the examples from the sheet. I will practice them at uh, tempo 100, saying the note names and saying the scale degrees. And then I will show you how to practice them up to tempo at eighth notes, triplets, and sixteenth notes. One, two, three, four. G, B, A, C, B, D, C, E, D, F sharp, E, G, F sharp, A, G, B. C, A, B, G, A, F sharp, G, E, F sharp, D, E, C, D, B, C, A, B, G, A, F sharp, G. Uh, scale degrees. One, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, seven, six, eight, seven, two, one, three, two, four, two, three, one, two, seven, eight, six, Seven, five, six, four, five, three, four, two, three, one, two, seven, one. Descending. Now you'll be doing a lot of jumping in fourths on this one just because the way the notes fall, you'll be doing a lot of string crossing. So this is a great technical exercise. I'll do that in triplets and it's tough in sixteenth notes. So the ticket is to make as little movement in the left hand as possible. Ascending combined with descending. So on this, in this sequence, we are always turning every other third around. So instead of going, we're flipping the second one of those around. And then ascending and then descending. So we get this interesting weave through the entire scale. And on this one, you want to make B the highest note, because if you want to make C the highest, it, it doesn't turn around right. So we got to stop it on the B. Descending combined with ascending. Now you could use this idea to work your way through all sorts of scales. You can do it with the modes, minor scales. Um, for example, I'll just give you a quick example of doing this with the altered scale. So the altered scale is the seventh mode of melodic minor. And it is a scale where you have to move out of position 
to access it. So out of the one finger per fret uh, position, there's no other way to do that. And the same idea applies to up, one down. Here's the altered scale. One, two, three, four. Ascending combined with descending. And descending combined with ascending. So this would be an example for the altered scale. Today's tip. Any exercise you do that works well for you doing it that way, switch it up and try it this way. For example, the exercise we just did, you could just do it all on one string. Different learning effect, but also very, very useful. As always, thank you for watching.